Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we're going to take a look at some new Topps knives for 2022. Uh, I get in hand the Tempest Mach 51. I'm very excited about that. And then we're going to talk about firmly in hand. And we're going to talk, uh, talk about some common grip texturing. Uh, and, and I'll get into the specifics and the stipulations when we get there. But it might not be exactly what you're expecting. Before we get to any of that, and before we even get to the pocket check, I just have to say, I'm, I'm looking at this. This thing is staring at me in the face, and it's a shameful, shameful moment from this past week. I, I had to go to Walmart for actual things uh, for the house. And, uh, of course, I go by the knife section, and I'm shocked and appalled at how they have wended down their selection to, like, I don't know, five or six at this particular one. And they're, and they're haphazardly strewn, stuck in little Lucite boxes in a giant cabinet. It's like you can barely see them. They don't want to sell them. They don't care. You always have to like uh, corral someone to open up the cabinet to get one for you. So they, they're not interested in selling knives anymore. Even their Ozark Trail line, which you know used to be all over the place, uh, you turn around, there'd be a, a cheap pocket knife in your face. Uh, even that has been reduced. Well, anyway, I was there. I was lurking, you know, looking, lurking. And this is what I found. I, I found a $3 fillet knife, Ozark Trail. I haven't even taken it out of the package, but I was I was compelled to buy it. because so I was like, oh, Steve at work, uh, he likes fishing. I've already given them like 16. You know, I've given him a bunch of knives already, but uh, he hasn't expressed a need for a fillet knife. But I got him one anyway. So th this is the kind of thing. This is why I call myself Knife Junkie, because it's not just the cool, high quality knives I'm after. It's like, oh, my gosh. That's made of steel and, you know, approximates an edge. I must spend my money on it. Okay, so now that I have that out, uh, it's like a therapy session. Uh, hopefully you won't charge me anything. Let's move on. All right, pocket check for today. Today I'm carrying something uh, that I've been carrying all week long uh, since I got it. Uh, I'm surprised I like it as much as I do, but I was very much looking forward to getting it, uh, especially after... Uh, Jared Neve, Mike Emler, and a couple of other people showed it off and talked about what a great uh, knife it is. And that is the Tucson TS301D2. Okay, the D2, of course, stands for the steel. This used to be a 14C28N uh, bladed production. Uh, they've changed to D2. Apparently, uh, they're, they're uh, catching on to the fact that they make these exquisite knives uh, with really high-end materials uh oftentimes and we're charging too little i think they're bringing everything down to a kind of a standard uh level i think they've changed the titanium they use and uh, on a lot of models have changed the steel to d2 uh for me it's that's not an issue at all this knife was comp uh, compelling to me initially because um i had a, a chance to experience four tucson knives and uh, they were all really well built, just not my taste, like lots of carbon fiber, lots of intricate milling, which I appreciate that they can do. It just wasn't my thing. And then I saw this one in particular and recognizing and remembering the high quality of those knives that just weren't to my taste. This one is with that uh, ochre colored, you know, natural canvas micarta butting up next to this really nice carbon fiber. Um, I am coming around to carbon fiber now that you're rarely seeing that regular weave stuff and you're seeing much more expressive carbon fiber and naturalistic looking carbon fiber. I'm liking it. So this uh, carbon fiber bolster, seamless. I mean, you cannot feel the transition between that and the micarta. Uh, it's shadow boxed by the titanium frame. It is not inset. It is uh, sitting on top of that frame, uh, but contoured nonetheless. So a very, very comfortable knife to hold. This backspacer is nice. It's a uh, um, gear pattern backspacer. Uh, the fat of my thumb can really sink into that if I'm holding it in reverse grip for some reason. Uh, really nice blade shape. It's it's very broad. It's an upswept clip point, um, and it's an inch and a half tall from the peak, you know, the crest of this thumb ramp to the flat part of the edge. That's that's a pretty broad blade, and the grind is over an inch tall. It's flat ground, over an inch tall, not very 
the uh, it looks like I'm sorry, I'm not even going to estimate the thickness. It's not very thick blade stock, though. And uh, it tapers to a super fine edge. This thing is classy looking and classy looking and uh, an incredible cutter. It is a really, really good cutter, but it's also fun to fidget with. It's got fantastic bearing action. You see me miss a couple of times there, uh, but that's just because I'm holding it lefty. Uh, who does not love an excellent smooth bearing uh, pivot knife with thumb studs and the thumb studs. Oh boy. Thumb studs all day long. And they are the blade stop. Even though there's that pin there, that is not the stop pin uh, when it's open. Uh, the thumb studs hang way proud of the handle, which makes it great for just pulling out of your pocket and uh, deploying quickly with a thumb flick or a uh, spidey flick. But the problem is that uh, like on some of the larger cold steels, you can actually cam the blade open like a wave using these giant uh, uh, thumb studs. And it happened to me once accidentally. And uh, the result was that painful little puncture wound there. Uh, this tip is very acute. It's very sharp. And it went in like nothing. And it hit like a major... <laughs> A major artery in my finger, and it, it gushed all over the place. So this blade is mine. It will never leave the collection. It has tasted my blood. Um, or whatever justification I need to keep more more knives. So I really like this Tucson Knives uh, knife. I'm not expecting to get many of them. Most of their designs don't appeal to me, but I appreciate the quality. I'm interested in having this in the collection. Uh, but here's the thing. When you order one, say from Amazon, it's coming straight, I guess, from the factory in China because uh, it took, it took a, an agonizing like 17 days. It was like on the slow boat. No, actually, it almost took a month. It was right before Christmas and uh, I got it right, right, uh, right at the end of January. Anyway, so if you can stand the wait, and it was kind of fun, actually, because I'm used to immediate gratification. This was like waiting for my, uh, my uh, decoder ring to come. So uh, what else was I carrying today? I know you're interested. Uh, next up was the Ron Steel Junior Knives, Ron Steel Design Prime. I love this knife. This is one that uh, I had custom made by Mr. Ron Steel. Uh, we've had him on the show. He's a he's a great guy, and a man. His knife making is just going through the roof. If you watch him on uh, Instagram, he's capable of some amazing things with uh, very little time under his belt. Uh, this is 01 Tool Steel Prime. This is his original model, but uh, originally it's just a single-edged drop point. I love the drop point shape of this knife, but I really wanted a double-edged version. I think it was screaming for it. He uh, never made one before, figured it out, and uh, did a really good job on this knife. And uh, used an interesting etching uh, technique and it brought out some of the uh, 01 tool steel characteristics here, kind of an interesting texture there, and a nice deep acid etch. I uh, am very, very fond of this knife. I remember talking about the handle, ordering the handle with him. He texted me while I was uh, walking around like a, like, <laughs> like a 28 days later zombie at uh, Blade Show. That means running around, but in a, you know, in, in a lather. Uh, at the show, and he's like, what kind of handle do you want on your Prime? And uh, I said, Maroon, Maroon Micarta. And he offered to do something a little extra, and he put in the, these cool stripes. And these happen to be my high school colors, the black, the gray, and the maroon. Uh, not, that that's a, not, that's, not that that's what I was going for, but I've always loved black and maroon together. Uh, so there you go. I had, that was my fixed blade. Look, about the same size as that TS-301 d2 if you <laughs> i say look but if you're listening you can't uh but take my word for it uh last up this is sort of the sensible thing today and that is the spider coat delica this is the warncliffe serrated delica this was a a gift from our good friend up north stone and steel Stu gave me this uh he carries this on duty actually he carries a large serrated um warncliffe endura on duty in his back pocket he is a sheriff's deputy 
and wanted to give me that or gift me that or the Delica. I chose the Delica because I knew uh, at this three inch size, I was more likely to carry the Delica in this size. Uh, I had it for a while with the black GRN handle. Very, very nice handle. We're going to talk about that later, actually. But I wanted to make this knife even, I don't know, more special. It was a gift from a great guy. So I, I got these titanium scales. Um, I think they're made in the same factory where they make um, Rough Riders. Now, that's based on absolutely no information at all. It's just that these are offered up by... Um, by uh smoky mountain knife works and i just had that thought maybe they just use the same place you know but the the scales are really excellent they're beautifully contoured they fit uh i don't know about you but i don't like taking apart spider co's at all in general and um this one isn't so bad but all the pieces fit there's one piece in the delica that is just a serious pia and uh they had all of their things lined up all their holes so it worked perfectly and it, it gives this knife a very substantial feel uh, i do love the grn of the of this family here this spider co family but on this knife for some reason i wanted a heavier feel in hand and boy i got it with that titanium so very nice this is my carry for today extravagant overkill haven't used anything yet uh except uh well Really, not any of these. I've used a different knife for something else. So, but this is what it's all about. If I need any of these, I have them on me. All right. So, let me know what you were carrying today. Uh, it is of interest to me, and uh, I want to know. I like keeping up with what uh, with what people are carrying because it also helps me uh, find new and interesting knives. That's how I found uh, all of these. Actually, I mean, I I knew about the uh, Delica, but these two were. People just kind of letting me know. And I am not a maven in anything. I've never been, you know, that person who knows all the cool new music or the cool new knives. But I like to uh, know people who do know that stuff so they su can suggest the cool stuff. So let me know what you were carrying. Uh, and uh, in doing so, uh, it will gratify me and give me ideas for new knives. All right. If you think what we do here uh, is worth it, please go check us out on Patreon. Uh, Jim has a cool uh, code. You can just go scan your, your uh, screen there, which is pretty pretty modern and hip and cool. I love that. Uh, you have We have three levels of support there, and you get interview extras, and you can get entered into a monthly knife drawing, uh, which is always fun. That's the third Thursday on Thursday Night Knives, by the way, when we do that. So you can find that all by going to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash patreon you're listening to the knife junkie podcast and now here's the knife junkie with the knife life news so excuse me i hate starting every sentence with so so i will just say in january and june uh, those are exciting times in the knife world because that shot show in january and blade show in june and we get a lot of new product drops and this year at shot show we knife and tops both came out with some pretty pretty strong showings, but I'm going to start with We Knife. Uh, they they are really, I, I would say, the signature of this year's We and Civivi catalog, at, at least what they've revealed so far, uh, is collaboration heavy, which is always good to hear because uh, We Knife is one of the best manufacturers in the world. And then you find some of the best designers in the world, you put those together. And then uh, the hoi polloi, like you and I, can, uh, like you and me, can actually buy these designs, like a Snacks. No way on earth could I ever uh, own a custom Snex. You know, he takes a long time to engineer these flawless designs, sometimes even without hardware, without the use of screws, etc. cetera. And, uh, you know, very exclusive, very, very small runs of knife uh, knives. You have someone like we come out and offer the Snex design, like this one at the very top. I like this Alan Elishowitz. We'll get to that in a second because... That surely should grace my pockets. Uh, but right here, this Snex knife, the Vision R, it, it, it boasts a brand new lock, uh, totally engineered by, by Snex himself, and uh, you know, labored over. I believe he's in Singapore, um, uh, but labored over and oftentimes um, documented on Instagram. You get to see kind of what he's going through to come up with these designs. Beautiful labored over designs, and then we can step in at some point when the design is perfected 
and make a bunch of them so that we can carry them and and his design can can reach a broader audience i mean who doesn't want that uh there's there's something great about the exclusivity of having a custom but if you just really like the design and you want to have it without having to you know mortgage your soul uh you know we knife is stepping in i love that also look at this thing uh very cool uh if you're not looking at it, it's got a nice uh, upswept Warncliff blade uh, opening hole. It's got a some sort of a lock on the back strap that I believe you pull back on, uh, similar to a shark lock, at least in in looks uh, as you pull it back. And then it's got one of those clips like uh, the uh, Graham knives on top of the on the spine of the blade, not on the on the clip side, so to speak. So interesting and cool looking. Uh, I got to say uh, next, uh, Alan Elishowitz, uh, a favorite of this show and one of my favorite designers and just a uh, a stalwart classic designer and maker and, and really, really incredible custom maker uh, out there who's got a huge background uh, being a badass uh, as a Marine recon, uh, you know, and martial artist and, and all this. Uh, so his designs are beautiful, but also based in the reality that it could possibly be need. Uh, for defense or fighting. This is uh, the press check. Beautiful, beautiful knife. It's a flipper, full a titanium frame lock with a, a sort of faux, faux bolster, <clears throat> excuse me, in the milling. And then if you look at the pommel, uh, it's very well set up for a uh, thumb capping. If you're holding it in reverse grip, the perfect angles for the thumb to wrap around the pommel and reverse grip and then it comes in a drop point recurve and a and a uh, tanto recurve and it's very cool the, the 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 saving grace of this knife is that, that i will not be obliged to buy it because it's out of my size wheelhouse it's a 3.1 inch blade uh but heaven help us if they come out with a uh, an xl press check because i'll have to get it uh you know so uh that's that's about wait uh, scroll down if you would uh, jim we're, we're uh, yeah okay there's a button lock malice uh, uh and then a couple of other in-house designs that are unnamed prototypes this upswept persiany looking tanto is pretty cool and then uh, it's called the curvaceous and then a couple of unnamed uh, prototypes so cool stuff coming to us from we knife and civivi um this uh this one is cool the unnamed prototype uh, it's a full framed we Full titanium frame uh, with a 3.75 drop point. Kind of generic for Wii, but... And then this uh, they have a really weird self-defense implement. I say really weird. It's a double recurve Tanto Karambit fixed blade with a, with a very odd uh, run of serrations. This is one i got to see. The, the picture I have here of the Orthrus is, is just not... Uh, it's not doing the, the design justice. I'm sure it's cooler than what it looks like right here. So, um, yep, there we have it. And another button lock in the Civivi. It's called Conspirator. All right, next up, Tops Knives. Very excited about the Tops Knives uh, um, uh, uh, catalog this year. Uh, it, like, like, this is kind of a pattern we're seeing from them. I think they are realistic because they have a very, very large catalog already. They, they do not discontinue a lot of knives. They have a lot in their discontinued catalog, but they have a giant catalog of knives they actively make and supply to their dealers. And every year they add, like they just added 19. They brought 19 new knives to SHOT Show. Many of them, most of them, I think, prototypes. Uh, but that's what they're doing. They're showing off prototypes, gauging um, reaction, and then figuring out how to schedule uh, release. Here, uh, they have some really, really exciting ones. This, this first one, the Silent Hero 4, I'm very excited about it. It's a 3.4 inch version of the Silent Hero, which is originally a nearly eight inch uh, knife designed by a um, Anton Duplessis, who's uh, an anti-poaching uh, guy down in South Africa, saving the elephants from scumbags. Really uh, uh, great, great knife design um, in that original one, but a big knife. This one is a, uh, like I said, a six and nearly six and a half inch uh, it's kind of down in that uh, sub K bar range and uh, looks like something you could definitely kind of stash and carry around much more easily. Uh, so very excited about that. And um, and then there's one down called the R2K. This one is interesting, designed 
by a gentleman for his uh, sons who were deployed. He wanted to make a uh, fighting utility knife, basically, or a utility knife that could uh, that could handle itself in a scrap. And you look at this R2K, and it is. I don't know. I, I think I may have drawn this knife a thousand times uh, in some in some sense because it is uh, it is a simple, perfect looking Warncliffe on a simple, perfect looking Moran style uh, single choil handle uh, that is like almost 100 percent neutral. And it's got a great butt cap for not only capping with your thumb, but also using to uh, focus energy uh, right there at that point. Uh, just a really cool knife. Can't wait to get this. And, and no doubt at a quarter inch thick, it, uh, it, it was held in good stead by those gentlemen in the sandbox. Okay. So here we have the Papa Delta. This one is very interesting to me because I know it just from watching a couple of the shot show videos that it was developed with a self-defense expert and they wanted to incorporate a ring, but I love the escape route out of this ring because rings rings are controversial, if you want to call it that. I mean, I've talked to different people who feel differently about the ring, uh, about the effectiveness of it, about the safety of it. A lot of people say you can really jack up your finger in a in a in an engagement, uh, in a dynamic engagement with a with a with an adversary if your finger is stuck in a metal ring. So I like that they gave you this escape route here. You get you get a lot of the um, power behind having your finger entrapped in there for downward energy, you know, when thrusting that blade. Uh, but if you have to pull it out the other way or, or it gets entangled and you need to disengage so you don't break your finger, it's a cool, it, I, I really like it. You're not going to be doing any fancy flipping, but, the fancy flipping is mostly just to be fancy. So really interested in this Papa Delta. It's a little tiny uh, daggery, uh, double-edged dagger thing. And then let's see. The last one I want to look at is this one, the Woodcraft. So they this is a beautiful looking knife. I look at it and I think, wow, it's like a little pirate knife. And then they call it the Woodcraft. And I realize, and, and then I, I found this out by doing a little reading elsewhere also, that this is based on the classic marbles outdoor knife, the, the marbles woodcraft knife. And I actually, I have one here. This is, uh, this was my grandfather's, uh, uh, marbles pattern wood, uh, woodcraft knife though. It's not, this one was not manufactured by, uh, this was by Cutco, but it's that pattern, that knife, the new tops knife is based on this old woodcraft pattern. And I think it's, uh, really exciting. I, I love the interpretation of it. It's very modern, but you can see where they were going with that with that continuous belly, uh, which is must be great for skinning, and that long clip on the top. And uh, my grandfather gave this to me a long time ago. He said, you know, he skinned a few bear with this, 1937. But I always took that to mean that he killed the bear with this. Um, and then later he explained, no, <laughs> no, child, uh, I merely skinned a bear that I shot with a rifle, you know. Um, but to have that knife come out in a modern interpretation from one of my all time favorite companies is exciting. And I know it'll be in 1095. It looks like it's powder coated there. And then it's got a, a faux, you know, full bolster and butt cap with the uh, two different micartas there, black in the center and tan on the ends. Really, really, really beautiful. And actually, uh, one one more knife, Jim, if you would. Uh, it wasn't on my list. If you could scroll all the way down, I'll tell you when to stop. Not that weird thing. We'll, we can talk about that another time. There's a Gladius. Not that. Keep going. That right there. Okay, this dagger here. This is a Lacey Zabo design. And uh, uh, you, you don't hear much from Lacey Zabo uh, because he's he's kind of an exclusive maker and designer. And uh, but he's been around for a while. He's a former special military, I believe, and a, and a police officer and SWAT and, you know, just one of these guys designing knives. And they're always very, very unique, uh, beautiful, but also built for business because, uh, you know, he's a knife fighting expert. And I have one of his. It's called the Tops Felony Stop. It's a little it's a tiny little pistol grip dagger uh, that stashes away nicely. This is the first thing I've seen him come out on a production thing in quite a while, and I'm glad it's Tops making it. This is a 
a, a non-symmetrical dagger. Uh, it's got a bit of a recurve on the on the primary edge, and then the full top edge is also sharpened. Uh, they, they're going to be shipping them unsharpened on top, but you can request the sharpened edge. It's just easier to sell uh, in more places if you don't, uh, by default, sharpen that top edge. I most likely will be getting this and will most definitely be getting it sharpened. And then here, their classic Steel Eagle, the knife that started Tops. They're coming out with a short version here. So very exciting stuff from, from Tops. And we, I, I'm, I'm really happy that people don't all wait for uh, Blade Show to talk about their, their new knives. It's nice to have this sort of exciting little drop at the beginning of the year because then you can start seeing. And Spyderco did an exciting drop just pre shot show so it's a good time of year for it you know knife enthusiasts who are looking for new stuff still to come on the knife chunky podcast we're going to take a look at the state of the collection i have a really great one on loan and a couple back from modding and then a new knife uh firmly in hand after that uh, that that's what i'm calling it firmly in hand uh, common grip texturing uh I want to talk about uh, grips. I talk about ergonomics, so I want to talk about the actual surface treatment uh, that, that helps keep that blade in your hand. All of that and more coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. So here it is on loan from KC. You know him as Knives, Knives Fast. Uh, this is his Tempest Knives Mach 51. Uh, this is his a prototype of the knife that he designed. And as you can see, it's thematically, mm, it's themed on high-speed things. Uh, the, uh, the Mustang, and then I think there's a bit of P51 Mustang as well. The Mustang car, the Mustang uh, aeroplane. Uh, the the Alpha Fighter, the the what do they call that? Air Supremacy Fighter of World War II uh, from the American side. You can see that in the blade design. So Casey had a couple of these made, and they have been doing the rounds. Oh, that sounds so cheap and tawdry. I don't mean it like that, but uh, they, <laughs> he has gotten it in the right hands, and uh, and then finally into my hands, which I definitely appreciate. Uh, this knife has been held and used and evaluated by some of our most trusted voices in knife YouTubery, and they have been praising it. And I have been looking at it thinking, that's interesting. I cannot wait to check it out for myself because that's interesting. And I think it's beautiful, but I wonder how the beauty will translate into ergonomics and into use. Uh, well, I'm here to tell you, people, um, that if I didn't like it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feature it here uh but also it's really good it feels amazing in hand so okay let's start here with the ergonomics and then we're going to talk about this amazing blade which i i finally actually just tested uh before we were rolling this podcast today uh because i realized i i had to talk about how it cuts because <laughs> that's what it's for after all uh but i had already determined that the action and uh, the fit and finish and everything else about this knife, the design is really, really excellent. Uh, really wonderful ergonomics on this, especially up here in this choil uh, position, choked up here. Uh, your hand just naturally wants to go there, but it's also quite comfortable in this saber grip if you need reach for whatever reason. Uh, say you're, you're, you're cutting a fig out of your fig tree and you just, you just need that extra little reach like this, and you're going to hold it in a, in a, Saber grip, well, this is a, a very, very comfortable and sure grip, even though it tapers down uh, at the pommel and is contoured beautifully, contoured in cross-section. It still is very sure in hand uh, in this saber grip. Um, okay, uh, now speaking of the grip and speaking of the scales, let's see if you can see this. Uh, and if you can't, I will assure you it has a gorgeous orange peel texture on the contoured grip. I mean, that combination is 
really sumptuous. And I don't use that word often or lightly, uh, but it's curved really nicely, uh, really nicely contoured and curved. And then to have that almost, this is going to be creepy, skin-like texture here uh, in that peel ply. I, I mean, not peel ply, in that orange peel uh, texture. It's it's really awesome. It feels great. Uh, maybe you can tell I haven't experienced much peel ply in my knife, uh, peel ply, orange peel finish in my collecting but I really appreciate it. And this knife has made me, uh, has stirred my interest in it. I definitely have to say. Okay, so ambidextrous, very practical ambidextrous uh, wire clip, uh, as we see in Spydercos and other, other um, well, mostly Spydercos. Uh, the pivot, very interesting pivot. It looks like a wheel. Let's see. I'm going to bring it, try and bring it into focus. It looks like a five spoke wheel on a sports car, say a Mustang. And then the blade, the blade is M390. If, and if you didn't know, if I didn't, didn't mention the handle is titanium. I think I did mention that. Sorry. Uh, the uh, blade M390, very, very nice. And the, the shape is outstanding. It looks like it's going for, it look, looks like it's going to evoke a machine, you know, with a canopy. And that that might supersede the the design of its geometry, but it doesn't. In other words, he like, oh, is this designer just going for a look and then and then cutting a secondary? I'm here to tell you that the answer is no. It's very, very thinly flat ground. I mean, very thin. Um, and I just cut down a cardboard box. And uh, sorry, Casey, uh, I didn't ask you if I could do that. Uh, I'm sure it's allowed, <laughs> but I don't want to mess up one of your prototypes. But obviously, I didn't. It's M390. It glided through this box. I have a whole bunch of boxes. I'm like, oh, I'm going to need that. I'm going to use that. And I've accumulated a, 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 a very flammable pile over in my corner that I'm, I'm now cutting down. And I used this, and uh, it zips through it like it's nothing. Uh, so it's not just a looker, people. It is a user. This is an awesome awesome knife and in this grip when you're really pushing down like this it's very comfortable because where the canopy meets the hood you've got a nice little little swale there that your thumb fits into and then in general this rounded spot on top the top of the canopy is really comfortable kind of anywhere you put your thumb and then the windows which are the opening holes are milled out to a sharp edge and depth i guess that edge could be a little sharper uh but you know for ease of deployment but already it works pretty well so uh, i'm really excited about this prototype i'm very excited for casey and uh what what a what a wonderful thing to see your uh your design your your um imagination you know writ large in titanium and steel so congratulations sure uh, sir, I love, uh, look forward to seeing where this goes next. <laughs> and I was about to say, I love the way it looks from the lock side. Almost looks cooler. It looks, I mean, like with this, it looks like air intakes and the wheel looks like it's the back wheel of this vehicle. I don't know. I just think it even looks cooler from the lock side. Beautiful and uh, simple and nice from this side. Totally badass from that side. All right. So thank you very much, Casey. I appreciate your uh, entrusting me with that awesome um prototype okay next up you remember josh mason bright for war i interviewed him a couple weeks back he's a, uh, a guy who makes custom uh, fixed blade knives edc knives and such uh, in the tradition of the japanese knives or i could have said in the japanese tradition and one of the things he does especially well is tsukamaki cord wrapping and I have this uh, Copus Designs Elvia that really needed to lose the twine I had put on the handle, but needed a little something to give it grip and girth because it's a thin and slippery handle. Uh, this is the Elvia. You know this. I've talked about it ad nauseum. Uh, it is a design collaboration with Ed Calderon. It is based on a fruit knife, uh, you know, kitchen fruit knife with that canted out curved blade and uh, is optimized for gross motor motion when you're 
pumping full of adrenaline and you need to get someone off of you or or are fighting. Uh, so therefore it needs a good grip. It's a dangerous knife. It's it's for a dangerous purpose. Needs a good grip. D didn't have one. It had a grip optimized for not printing when you drop it in your pocket. So thin and smooth. Um, the smoothness so it doesn't grip on any of the material in your pocket and uh, the thinness so, it, so it's less likely to print. But that's not good enough for my purposes. And that's not how I carry the knife anyway. So I had Josh Mason of Bright for War do his Sukamaki grip on the Elvia. And uh, it is stunning and gorgeous, if I do say so myself. I just showed it off on Thursday Night Knives. A lot of people uh, oohed and odd over it. Uh, against that green background, the ray skin here looks blue. It is more of a purple but uh, in reality. But this uh, beautiful black wrap crossed over creates these alternating peaks uh, when you turn it and look at it from its dorsal aspect. And those peaks, those alternating peaks become perfect for grip. And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes, actually. So I won't go too far into it here. Uh, but needless to say, he has taken this uh, storied knife and really nicely made, but utilitarian in fit and fit or utilitarian and finish knife and really turned it into something special with that Sukamaki wrap. So I just want to say thank you, Josh Mason. Check him out on Instagram. He goes by Bright for War on Instagram. Very, very cool. Uh, next up is also a modification. Um, this one is on my Monterey Bay Knives Peter Carey designed Turbo. Uh, and it's the knife modders, the, the knife modding power couple of the knife world called Knife Modders. Let me put their, their stickers out here so you can see. Uh, I, I uh, commissioned this from them. They do great work. That's Lindy and Richie. You know them as, well, Lindy and Richie. <laughs> they go by Knife Modders. They have an awesome business. And uh, so I sent them my plain Jane turbo. This was uh, titanium and, you know, just plain silver titanium and silver shiny blade that I did. I did not like the um, the satin on it. Sent it to them, did this beautiful acid stone wash on the blade, made it wickedly, wickedly sharp. But what I really was looking for was this color combination, this black blade, black stone wash blade with a green anodized here let me let me back it up with some white because i think that green is, is hassling with the color this green anodized um it's sort of a blue green i'm not getting the right color in my camera here but i'm going to describe it it's sort of a blue green uh bronze um it's it's that color when copper or bronze i think um no, not bronze. I guess copper. When it patinas and it turns green, that's the color I wanted on this handle. They nailed it with their anodizing. Lindy just put out a couple of videos on how to anodize. You should probably check it out. Electrochemical, I believe it is, anodizing. Uh, they did a gorgeous job on that. And they said, what they asked, what do you want to do with what do you want us to do with the backspacer and the clip? And I said, Chef's choice, the do your thing. Uh, and they came up with this cool, very, very nice looking stormy anodization kind of hard to see here uh i will do a close-up video with my um with a different camera but you can see there just really nice stormy looking multicolored um anodizing so they just did a beautiful job plus it they took it apart obviously to do all this and it's nice and smooth and sharper than sharper than it ever was before they put it on some sort of uh fixed angle thing so uh very very happy to have this knife and very excited to start carrying it um start carrying it <laughs> see what i did there uh peter carey design i love peter carey um and i you know sorry about that okay put <laughs> putting that down and then the last knife here uh that i got a couple of weeks ago and then failed to mention i think i, I showed it on thursday night knives but um something i've always wanted this is the cold steel coban and uh, I've always wanted it because it is in their classic Tanto line and design. But, you know, that classic American Tanto with the hollow grind and the flat wedge tip. But it's nice and light. It's nice and thin. And it's got that grippery, uh, grip, grippy uh, Grivex handle. And 
It is uh, it has a palm swell and everything. And really nice knife. This is a knife I got from my sister when she had a, a creepy guy kind of stalking her. And uh, she kept this by her bedside, not this one. And I noticed in time, things have changed. So I, I got this because it was on um, Smoky Mountain Knife Works flash sale for 30 bucks. I was like, okay, I've always wanted it. And I hate these $30 I have right here. So uh, why don't I just exchange them? And, in, you know, so got this really very happy. I did a little a little bummed about the Securex sheath. And there are two reasons. First of all, it does not snap or fit very. I mean, it fits nicely, but it doesn't lock. I'm going to push it in here. You can't even hear it here. It doesn't have much of a click in. So it could probably come out uh, unexpectedly. Uh, and, and I can fix that probably, but I don't like heating and molding kydex around a soft rubbery handle so this I'm, I'm not exactly sure about that um but the other thing is you can see i put a little aftermarket clip on here and this isn't the right one i'm going to take this off and put something else on but it ships with this this is just the definition definition of lame it is so lame and this isn't a, a a gsm thing either uh they were doing this before gsm bought them and I remember thinking, hmm, how's that going to work? Uh, OK, so what it is, is a metal clip uh, that can detach using Chicago screws. But it is not a clip like, say, a tops clip or a um, discrete carry clip or any any other metal clip except the kind that you have on your walkie talkie that is built to easily slip off your belt. It does not have a, a, a backward facing catch at the bottom of the clip. So you slip this thing over your belt and it's on there, but you certainly can't clip it upside down and you certainly cannot draw the knife without the clip disengaging and coming off like a walkie talkie. And then it made me think, is that why the retention in the sheath is so like weak? Because they know that the retention in the belt is so weak, but they bought 50 million of them and they have to use them before they redesign the clip. I thought this was a real cheesy misstep. Plus, it, you know, it's silvery and man, man, what a miss. What a miss. But the knife itself is great. You know, it's Aus 8. It's a it's a it's a supposed to be a fighting self-defense last ditch kind of knife. They actually label it on the on the uh, clamshell package it comes in as EDC, which is hilarious to me. Uh, but Cold Steel Coben, mixed emotions, uh, mostly about the sheath, but very happy with the knife. Highly recommend it if you're a, someone who doesn't like uh, fixed blades, doesn't have a collection of fixed blades, but wants one or two that's uh, utilitarian and at the same time could be uh, used in a, in a bad situation. Uh, I would say that that's pretty excellent choice. You're not out much money and it's pretty damn capable. All right, so we're going to talk briefly about uh, common grip texturing. Now, I was getting to this before with the cord wrapping, so we'll talk about cord wrapping first. But before I do, I want to differentiate what I'm about to talk about from this. Um, Cold Steel and Emerson, for instance, are known for their very aggressive peel ply texturing in their G10, that surface texturing uh, as being very aggressive and, and it does give you a good grip for sure. It also destroys your pants and it takes a while to wear down to a, a, a point where it's reasonable. This is not what I'm talking about. I am not talking about this kind of peel ply surface treatment. Uh, we will be talking more specifically about, um, milling and different ways to, um, uh, add to the grip outside of the ergonomics. Okay. So First up, we're going to talk about cord wrapping. Now, I, I briefly talked about it when I when I mentioned, when I showed off this uh, Elvia cord wrap by Bright for War here. So i uh, bring out a couple of other examples. Here is a, uh, a CRKT um, Obaki. Uh, and actually, this Obaki was the first thing that really showed me uh, how, how excellent uh, these kind of grips can be. And then here is the cord wrapped custom anomaly by Bastinelli Creations. Now they all have, um, to be Sukamaki wrap, I, I think that there are a lot of different things that have to be present. I think technically this um, this cord wrap is not a Sukamaki. It does not have the ray skin underneath. But basically it's a flat 
cord that's pulled around the, the uh, tang of the blade and then twisted with the other side and wrapped around in a continuous motion. And it creates a peak on both sides on the flat of the handle and remains flat as it goes around the, the edges of the handle. So it results in this pattern of alternating uh, raised areas here that really really grip into your hand it looks like a it looks like a mountain range on one side and then an alternating mountain range on the other and you get a very very firm grip now i realized with this obaki that most uh, modern cord grips are um what do you call it uh, epoxied they are covered with a coating that really hardens it so this is not this does not feel like shoelaces. It's not soft and pliable. I cannot move them around on the handle or or push down these peaks or move them around. They are firmly there. It this feels like milling. It feels like they had a big piece of uh, you know G10 and they milled out giant grooves in it. So I'm a huge fan of this kind of wrap because it is very grippy. It allows for something not to have a finger guard but still allow you to be confident with your grip because, because those peaks and valleys, I mentioned the peaks a lot, but those valleys are where your fingers and the fat of your fingers and palm really sink in. So you can have a non-guard knife, non-finger guard knife, but have a firm grip on this kind of um, cord wrapping that's hardened with epoxy and get a superior grip. I love that grip. Okay. So moving on, uh, and you, you pretty much only see this um, on fixed blades naturally just due to its, uh, due to its makeup. However, on uh, a recent TJ Schwartz uh, design from 2021, I believe, with CRKT, he, he attempts this, well, he, he does this by making a handle that can be cord wrapped, uh, but it's a folder handle. So interesting, uh, interesting design by an interesting designer and maker. Okay, next up, I want to talk about FRN. Uh, FRN is not a luxurious, FRN stands for fiberglass reinforced nylon. It goes by a number of different, uh, you know, um, proprietary names and such. But what it is, is really a uh, high tensile plastic, basically injection molded into forms. And you can get some really outstanding textures and, uh, I'm sorry, textures and um, landscapes, basically, with this kind of injection molding. So what I'm talking about here is, for instance, very, very well illustrated in the bi-directional or yeah, the bi-directional texturing of the Spyderco Endura. Now you can see uh, if you have ever held an Endura, you will know that uh, or any any of these uh, FRN Spydercos that if you push forward, it grips. If you pull back, it grips. You have a whole network, a whole army of radiating little pockets here and uh, and <laughs> and raised up trapezoids. Oh my gosh, this is exhausting. Uh, that that really, really grip grip the hand. And it's all done by injection molding this awesome plastic into these different uh, patterns. Now here you have one that is, very popular and this is the cold steel griv grivery i believe grivery they call it it's frn and it's filled with little iron crosses that really grip the hand really grip the hand they're raised up in a, a lowered field of frn and your hand just simply sinks in to all of the nooks and crannies and it gives a great grip. And then, of course, you look at this knife and it's got crazy ergonomics too. all the choils and swoops and such uh, give you a lot of different places to grip. But for your fingers wrapping around and for your palms, this gives an excellent, excellent purchase. And the fact that there are valleys, like many, many peaks and valleys uh, all around these iron crosses mean that... Uh, Things such as water or uh, if you're using it to skin an animal, blood, whatever, uh, have channels, have have channels of escape so you can still maintain your grip. Uh, OK, uh, here's the last example of FRN I want to show you. 
and uh, we'll, we will see a we will see this this is this is for this is what do they call it foreshadowing okay so here is the demco 80 20.5 great knife with the shark lock and if you can see it's got that it's got a <laughs> i gotta stop saying if you can see you can either see or you can't what it has is a texturing that is very similar to the kind of floor texturing you would see in a big piece of heavy equipment or on the uh, on the on the ground right in front of the subway track or it's it's a diamond shaped raised diamond shaped pattern here and it's got a great grip great grip and how it's made is injection molded but the next category is is milling and we're going to be talking about milling G10 and micarta and the first example I'll show you is also the Demco knives uh, this is the AD20 and this one is in G10 and it's got the very same texture but it's done differently it's milled into that G10 this uh, network this tight network of oblong pyramids creating a field of grippiness um, here it's injection molded seemingly hot plastic shot into a mold and this is a flat piece of G10 that's milled out with a machine and and removed. So we have a injection and a reductive um, uh, process for both of these, and it's the same pattern. I, I think it's fascinating and cool, but you might be saying, okay, Bob, yeah, we get it. Big deal. But it is a big deal, man. It is a big deal. G10 and micarta can can be milled in a in a variety of great ways. Here is one that i really like these are radiating um this is a radiating pattern of sunburst basically and it is on the rsk mark one the mini uh ritter hogue rsk mark one if you look from the pivot outward and having this uh, multi-layer g10 really helps illustrate it but you can see how the lines radiate out from the pivot and look like a sunburst and it's not only beautiful, especially in this uh, particular G10, but where the lines cross over that radiate this way and that are concentric circles coming north to south, it is incredibly grippy. It is very, very grippy, but it also leaves channels, like I said, for sweat and water and whatever to get out of there to, so you can still maintain your grip. So I really like what they did here. This is uh, a grip pattern, a milling pattern that is seen on on uh, a number of uh, Doug Ritter's uh, new knives. A couple of other, a um, couple of others here. My one of my absolute favorite milling patterns uh, in micarta or G10 is here on the XM18 by Rick Hinderer knives. Uh, it, it's got these oblong connected hexagons that are kind of stretched north to south and uh, are have peaks and valleys that uh, that really <laughs> you can really sink the fat of your fingers into but it's not in any way it's like a massage it's not in any way um, painful or aggressive it just feels good and you want your hand to stay in place this one here is uh, milled out of canvas micarta and canvas micarta already has larger voids because the fabric uh, the threads are larger and they're further spaced because it's canvas. And in those voids uh, is are, are infinite opportunities for gription. So you got you've you're milling into a surface that's already somewhat uh, grippy, uh, a, a grippy surface. So I love it. Uh, Alan Putnam did a great uh, did a great thing here with these Alan Putnam scales and rescued my bug out here. And he used this very popular Anzo pattern that's uh, uh, created by uh, Danish knife maker uh, Jens Anzo. And uh, really what it is is hitting it with a, a, a rotary um, sort of sander at an angle from the top and then at an angle from the bottom. And you meet in the middle with these alternating zigzags. And man, does that pattern just grip amazingly. And uh, sometimes it's too much. I have Anzo pattern on uh, my backcountry blackout, a knife, a fixed blade knife by off grid knives. And it's almost too much on the edge. If you don't knock off the edge, it can become and chamfer the edge, 
uh, of an anzo pattern, it can become like a saw, <laughs> you know, like a, a serration there uh, where, the, where the sort of scooped out edges, uh, scooped out uh, portions meet the edge. So you got to be careful with that. But the, the anzo pattern is awesome. Here on the AD15, also uh, a Demco design, uh, in, in this case produced by Cold Steel, you can see, again, it's that same pattern you're seeing on the AD20, just blown up. It's those triangles that uh, have that real industrial look, like the uh, standing platform on the side of a bulldozer or something. You know what I mean? Really, really grippy. This one, actually, I had to sand down under the clip um, to get it to be usable. Okay, so now for this category, uh, Pattern Mill G10 in Micarta, uh, the, the last one I'm going to show, and is to me the big daddy of them all, is the Zero Tolerance Zero 0200, a classic hard use tactical knife. This man, okay, so it's got these raised, uh, I don't know, ziggurats. I don't know what the what what these shapes are exactly. They're elongated pyramids, so they have an edge across the top instead of a point. They're oriented north north to south, but they are also this is a Ken Onion design uh, from his earlier days, so definitely lots of angle, uh, lots of uh, organic curves, and these raised elongated pyramids follow the curves in and create a channel, create channels for your hands to fill. And when you look at it from this direction, it's got a Coke bottle contour, and then when you look at it from this direction, uh, it's contoured north to south too. So just uh, they they took uh, zero tolerance took the uh, the milled pattern for grip just to another level with this because they did all of the contouring in these other dimensions or, or I guess in this third dimension so or fourth dimension I don't know in in other places and uh, I really really appreciate it I do wish that that would happen a little more actually and maybe from ZT uh, maybe that's why I need to get the three oh eight but. That is the milled G10 and micarta, and uh, a lot of it includes some classic, classic patterns. Okay, I have a lot of knives here, so I have to move them over. Okay, next up, I want to talk about uh, milled aluminum, and I'll just show these two examples. I have a ProTech here, and I have a uh, uh, this is the ProTech. TR3, Tactical Response 3, and this is the Ultratech by Microtech. Okay, so milling in aluminum gives you the best, I think, the best grip. What do you mean by that, Bob? All I mean is that anecdotally, all of my Microtechs and all of my Protechs, which are all made and all milled out of aluminum, have really, really excellent definition and crispness in the milling and i'm talking especially about these textures the very large jimping here on the tr3 on the top and bottom are there so that you can thrust forward with confidence because this does not have any sort of finger guard it has a uh, palm swell or, or a finger swell down here and it has more milling and it has uh, knurling on the side but really this this jimping on the top and bottom are really going to hold your hand in place. And that's what it's for. This is called tactical response. You're supposed to be punching this through, uh, you know, car doors and stuff like that. So you don't want your hand to slide up there. So that milling, uh, you know, it's only, it's only five jimps on both sides, but without being in any way uncomfortable, it is just sure. I mean, it is absolute. Your fingers, your, your, the fat of your thumb and your fingers just sink in there and stay. And I found the same uh, with the milling on all of my Microtex. And like I said, I only have three, but they're all aluminum. And the jimping on them are just, they're insane. And again, here, it's high stakes. Look, this is a thrusting knife. It's a dagger. Uh, but what if you hit something hard, you know, by accident? You need not only this button on top, but you need this jimping and this jimping and this jimping to keep this relatively neutral hand, this extremely neutral handle in your hand, especially in thrusting. And that's, that's its metier. So I think uh, aluminum is a good choice for these kind of uh, uh, automatic knives for a number of reasons. It's, you know, it's lightweight and it's inexpensive, relatively speaking, but 
I find that it's it's superior for at least at least what the knives I have. It is superior for a grippy, grippy texture milled in there. Uh, and there we have it. And, and you're all you might be furrowing your brow. I don't know about that, Bob, but I'm just speaking anecdotally here. I, the knurling on the side of this TR3 is is insane. See, you can, my voice cracked. You can tell I'm telling the truth. Uh, but also, look here. Uh, if you have it in this pinch grip, you're good to go, and you're not going to slide up there. So uh, I do like the milling in aluminum, and uh, look forward to getting more aluminum knives. Uh, but last up is the milling in titanium, and we have a, a, a couple of really cool examples here. Um, I'm, I'm going to start with an obvious one, and that is Tactile Knife Company. Uh, this is the rock wall. Great little EDC three inch uh, blade. Mine is in XHP. I think it comes in 20 CV these days. But milled into that relatively neutral handle is a very fine texture. Very fine indeed. And uh, it, it curves around the uh, chamfering to the very top. And it is a whole bunch of micro beveling, or not beveling, a whole bunch of micro milling lines and all together it's like they engage with your fingerprints uh they're small they're on a micro level and i swear that's what i feel when i hold this knife i feel like even if it didn't have this flipper tab which some of them don't like the thumb stud version it would still feel sure in hand if i needed to open a clamshell you know like a stubborn clamshell case i would feel very confident with this in hand you also have radiate uh concentric milling in circles on the pivot, which I know is decorative, but also adds to grip if you're pinch gripping this. Um, so this sort of micro milling in titanium is very effective, just like that sort of macro milling in aluminum is very effective. Another example of that uh, can be seen on this um, uh, Crystal Aurora. Excuse me, I had a little mind lock there. This Crystal Aurora is covered with well, aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing areas of milling. You see this long, this strip here uh, running along the side. It's about one third of the width from top to bottom of the handle running down the center with north to south lines milled in. It's like a long run of jimping all up along the side of this blade. But like the, the uh, tactile rock wall, it's micro. It's 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 very small, and it engages with your fingerprints. It's not engaging necessarily with chunks of fat on your finger. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, it's 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 reaching you at a at a at a deeper level, man. Uh, and then they have that same traction plan right here on the clip, which makes it great for extracting and also looks great. You know that's that's the thing about this. All of this milling adds to the grip and adds to the aesthetics again here if you need to go in a pinch grip there happens to be some concentric arcs milled uh perpendicular to the edge right here so if you have to pinch grip you get some gription going this way too so just a really awesome two really awesome examples of that kind of micro milling in titanium and i think that's where titanium seems to accelerate and if you want to talk real micro we can look at this the uh, orange peel finish on uh, on the uh, Mach 51. It's not even milling. It's a chemical process, I th think. <laughs> I sound like Rob Dyrdek. I think. and uh, But it's not only pleasing to look at and pleasing to touch, but it adds to the grip. It adds to the texture. Um, here we have a great example of something very simple. This is the, um, this is the Umnumzan by Chris Reeve Knives, and it's got a simple crosshatch milled in there. And that crosshatch is very tactically pleasing. It also helps you index where you are because it's not on the entirety of the of the blade of the knife handle. This has uh, become one of my favorite knives. This I got in 2021, the latter half of 2021. It's a great carry, uh, and part of that has to do with I just like this flourish. It's kind of random, but it's on all it's on all the umnumzans, and it's a part of what it is. But 
I don't know. I like the way it feels, but I also like the fact that it's macro and it's and it's in this titanium um, venue here, but but it's not quite as sharp as the aluminum. So it feels good in hand. If this were aluminum and you had all of this on the side, I, I feel like it would start to to bug a little bit. A uh, couple other examples here. The wonderful and beautiful Riot K2 uh, has this dragon scale texturing on top which originally I didn't want. I wanted the one that looked evocative of the Tsukamaki wrap, uh, but those were all out. And then it's got this hammered, faux hammered finish bolster. Well, these really add to the grip. They are beautiful to look at indeed, but the, uh, the scales here, the dragon scales here uh, are like the ribbing in a, in a gun, on, on the slide of a gun. And so stop your hand from moving forward. And then here you have this, texturing which looks nice it's also good for indexing but again in that pinch grip it offers you some some texture some indexing and some texture uh, with all those little dimples in there for your hand to sink into uh last up in the milling uh in the in the milling titanium and just keeping it firmly in hand is terracing and you see this a lot in titanium and here's an example i have that uh that I really like. It's very pleasing to the eye, but man, is it pleasing to the hand too. This is the inversion, a, uh, a Pical style knife by Kaiser. Pical meaning you're supposed to grip it. It's meant to be gripped with the tip down and the edge in, and it's for, for fighting, for cussing and fighting. And a small knife like this for a grisly and messy purpose such as this should have a good grip. No, no. Uh, so why did they not make this in micarta? Because it's a fancy pants version, you know, it came in their uh, uh, two hundred and fifty dollar line. Um, I can't remember the artisan line or something. I can't remember what they call it, but it was a great opportunity to flex their milling muscle. And this terracing here really, really adds wonderfully to the grip. I mean, I would, I would be hesitant to use this knife uh, if it had a smooth grip because. It's not a very large grip, and what you have, you really want to hold on to. You definitely don't want anything happening where you come down this way onto that blade. So I, I like terracing. You see it, you see it uh, in micro versions on thumb studs all the time. Uh, but sometimes you see it on handles, and I think it, you see it a lot in Brian Ty designs too. I think it adds uh, a thickness to the blade, a width to the, to the handle that's necessary uh, without, uh, while reducing weight and material and overall feel of the width. Um, so terracing and titanium. So lots of different ways to create grip on the surfaces of, of knives. I think that uh, for, um, for fixed blade knives right now, uh, for speaking small carryable fixed blades, I'm a Sukamaki fan all day long, but you know, that changes. You, you've, you've seen me change over time. So um, expect more. Okay. So that's it for this uh, edition of the knife junkie podcast. Thanks for sitting in on this therapy session with me. Um, if you like more of this kind of content, you can check it out uh, on, uh, on our website, the You can check it out here on YouTube. Check us out on Instagram um, coming up. Uh, we have uh, Treddy. You know Treddy. He's a knife YouTuber from Switzerland. Awesome guy. What a refined uh, collection and eye. I mean, this guy, uh, he was very interesting to talk to. He's on our next uh, show, episode 288. And then, of course, tune in on Thursday night for Thursday Night Knives because it is oh so fun. Uh, oh, and then also we got all these uh, podcast apps here. You can download us and listen to us on the way to work. Also, uh, sometime, please ask me about my knife collection uh, T-shirt I got from uh, <laughs> from my wife for Christmas. Ask me about my knife collection. So I'm going to wear this to the pool pretty much every weekend this summer and see what happens. All right, everybody. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher and putting up cool scanning codes like this, uh, I thank him and I hope you thank him too. Uh, I say till next time. Don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.